In less than 15 minutes, you're going to be able to replicate this in ArcCAD 26. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today I'm gonna to teach you exactly how you can replicate this beautiful beach home in ArcCAD 26. Before we get into it and we actually break this down step by step, I wanted to thank over 2,000 of you that have gone ahead and downloaded the free ArchiCAD shortcuts template available on the website. Now, because of this overwhelming demand and support, I've decided to actually go ahead and take this one step further. So in the next couple of weeks, you're gonna see something magical appear on this desk but it is available right now on the davidtomich.com.au store. Now, I'm not gonna sell any more of that. Let's dive straight into this tutorial. So first of all, we're gonna see on the left-hand side, we have our image that we are gonna be replicating. It is very simple, it is very easy to understand. It is basically one box with another box on top of it and glass walls around it. What makes it creative and unique is the actual materials and modeling. So we're gonna try to do this as quickly and easily as we can. So I'm gonna start this by pressing Command 7 because I'm on Mac. I'm gonna insert a new story below. I'm gonna call that footings and I'm gonna go minus 172. You can go minus whatever you want. It's just the typical thickness of a concrete slab here on ground. Now I'm also gonna untick all of those on the right hand side. They mean nothing in this video, just force of habit later down the track. So now we press OK and double click on our footings layout to go directly to our footings. What I'm gonna do next is click on our slab tool. I'm gonna to open up our settings by pressing Command T, which will open up all of our slab settings. You can see by clicking on this section here that it opens up all the predefined concrete slabs. So in this instance, we have a 150 millimeter ground slab with tile finish on top. For me, that's perfect in this instance. I'm simply gonna press OK and move on with this tutorial. I don't really wanna to focus too much on those elevation markers, so I'm gonna hold my scroll wheel, come across, and then I'm gonna simply start by drawing a rectangle. Now, this rectangle is quite large in the overall scheme of things, so what I'm gonna do is go 30 meters by 10 meters by simply typing that in. Now you see, we've already created our first structural element. Next, we're gonna double click on the ground floor, right click on footings, and go show, as trace reference, which will show our footings layout immediately below. Now what you'll notice is if you need to come up top to window, then come down to palettes, you're also gonna to need to come down to trace and reference. That'll automatically open up a new window, which we can drag and drop into our workspace. So if we toggle this little square on and off, it'll toggle our trace reference on and off as well. Now looking at this picture, what we'll see is there is basically two levels. There is a ground floor that's entirely glass, there is a first floor that is predominantly cladding and just a small piece of glass here and there. So let's start with our wall tool, open up our settings, command T again. Let's try find something that we're gonna be happy to work with. There's a series of predetermined wall types and wall composites. It doesn't really matter what you select in this instance because we're not building it. So for me, I'm simply just gonna select the 90 millimeter insulated stud partition and press OK. Next, I'm gonna click once, scroll into my corner to make sure I've accurately selected that corner, press the P button to flip that wall around and then continue all the way around whilst holding shift to make sure my walls are drawn dead straight. Now, if we press escape, go to our marquee tool, marquee that square, right click, show marquee in 3D, we'll see that we've automatically started to draw some shapes in 3D. What we will notice is that our slab and our walls are not aligned. So what we're gonna do is select our slab, press Control or Command D for David, click on one of the hotspots and move it up to the walls. Now let's double click on our ground floor plan, click Escape a few times, select all of our walls, Control C to copy, double click on our first floor plan, Control V for victory to paste, click away from that, come back into our 3D marquee, and there we go. We have another layer very rapidly created on top. Let's go back to our ground floor plan now and start modeling some windows around. If we treat this face as the front that we're looking at and that as the back, we can basically mirror and replicate it. I'm just gonna simply assume that it is identical all the way around. So let's go into our window tool, open up our window settings and create the first window at the very front of this elevation. Let's start by typing in window up top in the search toolbar it's gonna give us window 26, which is one of the simplest and easiest windows to use in this instance. Override these horrendous orange lines that I can't stand. 
even looking at throughout this project and then remodel our windows to the right size. So overall, let's click OK and model this in 3D. So if we drop one of these windows in here at the front of our building, we'll see it's quite a small window. Realistically, the width of that window is probably about two meters, if not even more. Let's say that's two and a half meters all the way across. So we can either change that up the top, we can click Command T and change that in this top setting here, or we can simply adjust one of the hotspots and drag it out as we need to. Now this window is also probably about five meters tall, if not more. So let's change that to five meters tall. Now we wanna center this window to the center of this wall. So let's first start by highlighting and selecting the window. Command D or Control D for David again to reposition it and then find the center of your wall. If we go back to our 3D marquee to see what this is starting to look like, we can spin around to our other wall and we can see it is an overkill and there's some problems occurring. So let's break this down a little bit further. Let's reduce that window size to two meters and let's reduce the overall height to let's call that three and a half meters. We also wanna drop the seal straight down to zero, not 900. And then we can increase our window to four meters because that window is gonna cut across. We're gonna continuously edit this window as we go across because it is the main feature of the house. But what you'll see here is this top wall is basically not intersecting with this window. Now the easiest way to fix this problem is to delete that wall select the ground floor version and extend the leaf to the top. Then we wanna open up our settings by going Command T and show all stories on floor display. We wanna select show all relevant stories and press okay. Now, if we come to our ground floor plan, we'll see it in our ground floor plan. If we go to our first floor plan, we'll also see that window in our first floor plan. Coming back down to our ground floor plan, we wanna duplicate this window. So let's start by pressing Command D then tapping the option button to duplicate that window as we move it across and move it 300 millimeters to one side. We wanna repeat that same step on the other side, which gives us three identical windows. Coming back into 3D, you'll see that we've created those three identical windows, very similar to what we see in the image. Now what I'm understanding is this house is significantly narrower than I originally drew. So what I wanna do is select my outside wall and reduce that by let's say 1200 millimeters. I wanna repeat that same step all the way around and on both floors. When I've done that, I wanna select my four walls again, press Command I for igloo and it will automatically intersect those walls. Now coming back into 3D, we can see that that's adjusted. We can simply adjust our slab on the 3D by selecting the blue outer lines and adjusting as we see fit. Now, I don't actually know what the windows are like around the building, so what I'm simply gonna do is select that same window by pressing Alt or Option to copy the parameters across, and I'm gonna reduce that window to three meters. What I then wanna do is select one of the outside nodes, go to my Multiply tool on the right-hand side, and distribute, let's say, about six copies across this entire project. So clicking once more on one of the nodes, I'm gonna distribute 25 meters across. I wanna repeat that same step on the wall on the opposite side. Back to 3D, you'll see that our shape is actually starting to take some form, which is looking really, really impressive. So now we wanna actually focus on the architecture on the outside. Now, because you've made it this far in the video, you'll be excited to know that down below in the description, there is a Discord link. It will allow you to join a Discord community 100% completely free so that you can talk all things architecture with people just like you from all over the world. If you want access to this ArcCAD file in this video, make sure you sign up to the Patreon, which will then send you to the Discord chat to also talk with everybody, but also gain exclusive access to all things ArcCAD. Let's come up to our first floor plan and think about this for a second. Basically what they've done is constructed a full project going from floor to ceiling up and then offset an external skin. They've either battened it out or they've used some sort of top hats. But in this instance, all I'm gonna do is show you another wall. So now what we can do is select multiple walls, click on the outside, go to our offset all edges tool, adjust out as we see fit, press the option or alt button, push that out 350 millimeters, and then repeat the same process for that front wall. So coming back into 3D now, we'll see we have this outer skin that's hovering over the top of our entire facade. If we select all of those outer skins, we can go Command T 
and then we can change our actual materials. So I'm just gonna simply paint that black ivory for this instance. It is a textured wood finish, but we're not gonna go into too much texture detail in this video here. Now let's focus on this small little V cutout at the very front. If we come back to our first floor plan, there are multiple ways to do this. The easiest, in my opinion, is to use the roof tool. So if we use the roof tool and create a basically an invisible intersecting object, what we can do is start by creating a single pane roof, duplicating it on both sides and adjoining it exactly where we need. Coming into 3D, we'll see again that we've started to create this roof structure. So let's open up our settings again. Let's change this entirely. So it doesn't really matter what it is. I only need it to be one millimeter thick and I don't want it to be seen. So I'm gonna change and override all of my materials to air. Next, I'm gonna press OK to finish that off and we're gonna see that we can have our roof basically cutting that outline entirely. I think that pitch is a little bit high, so I'm gonna drop that to about 15, maybe 18 degrees. Right click on this wall, connect solid emulent operations, and then I'm gonna select my two roof panels, go add as operator, subtract with downwards extrusion, and hit execute. Now I can close that panel and you can quickly see that we've created exactly what we've been looking for. Now, because that roof pitch is slightly larger, this window, we're gonna simply increase the height of that window to create that visual effect we are seeing in this example image as well. Now, as all of this comes back together, let's jump to our roof plan. Let's right click, show us trace reference on our first floor and create a brand new roof structure. This roof structure is obviously using the external wall on the outside. So we are gonna draw one brand new roof on the outside walls. By simply drawing that roof in, we can come back to 3D now. We can see we've created our beautiful black roof. Let's simply override all of those textures. Again, we're gonna name it black ivory to match our cladding. Again, we're not going into textures, claddings, or anything like that. We are gonna select our two external walls, drag them all the way up, right click, connect, solid element operations again, repeat our steps we did previously, this time with an upwards extrusion and click execute. So far so good, our project is starting to come together. It is definitely looking a lot taller than it is in this image. So if you wanted to reduce the overall heights in your command seven area, to 25 or even 27 you're most welcome to but there isn't too much left in this design to make it look as beautiful as this image does so let's now jump back to our first floor plan now we have to introduce this large section up the top that is breaking out and creating this beautiful vista of a window so let's start by introducing a brand new wall let's step that out 500 millimeters and adjust that one and a half meters either side of the middle of this building. Now this gives us this shape at the front, but it does not give us the shape at the top. So we wanna also extend our two walls roughly to the middle of this building, depending on where they are. Jump back into 3D to understand what we've drawn. Select all three of our walls and extend their height. We wanna extend our height to roughly the middle of this roof pitch. So clicking OK there, and you can see that we've started to create our boxed out shape. Now, this shape doesn't start from the first floor like all the other walls do. So similar to how we've just extended up, we're also gonna extend it from the bottom. We're gonna start it roughly in the middle of that space. Now, if we come back into our first floor plan, we can go down, hold the option button over one of our windows below, come back up, introduce a nice large square window into that space, come into 3D so we can adjust it exactly where we need to, place it in the middle, and then we only have two windows left. So as easy as that first little window was to replicate, we're gonna go back down by pressing Command down, Command back up after we've selected our little window there. We're gonna introduce one small little square window over this side. I think it's probably about 500 by 500 millimeters. It's not a very big window. And we're gonna repeat the same process somewhere about here. Coming back into 3D, we can see that our windows are all too low. So we're gonna select both windows, adjust the height of them a little bit, and also adjust the size. They're definitely larger than I anticipated. So let's go one meter by one meter on our design, adjust again perfectly where we need to see them. 
Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you check out the playlist to the side of me. It has more great architectural content. If you love the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And while you're there, there are some great architectural downloads as well available in the description below. Like I said, that's it for me. So I'll see you next Monday.